Let's go over this case because I think it's really a, a kind of a tricky case and there's a lot we could learn together from it. This patient has been through a lot of ortho. In fact, she has some blunting of her roots. She's been through so much ortho and she's just had enough. She presented to me um, after nobody else would take on her case. And so she has a congenitally missing lateral tooth number seven, a peg lateral number 10, and rebounded ortho. And so, you know, generally I try to talk to patients going to go back into ortho, even clear aligners, but this patient's just had enough. So we're going to try to do this through minimally invasive workflows. Um, here I am removing her old Maryland bridge, which was bonded to the central and cuspid. I'm going to place a ultra narrow 3.0 urus implant, and I'm going to design the surgical guide using their free pylon software and the custom healer using their trust software. So their pylon software is really intuitive. It's like a wizard based workflow. It's based off of the Dentique platform, which has been around for a while and is ultra popular and amazing. Um, and so here, what I'm doing in this software is I already pinned the upper and lower jaws to the CBCT, and now I'm extracting tooth number seven virtually. And it lets you design a surgical guide for free. As long as you're placing a urus implant, everything is fully controlled. It's all mathematically pre-programmed pre -programmed for your drill length and your um, sleeve height and everything like that. But of course, you could kind of hack it if you're placing other softwares uh, are there implants? I mean, you could kind of adjust that for and make it kind of work um, because it's all customizable. But here we have the Eurus 3.0 implant um, snuck right in these tiny little space here. I'm barely missing the PDL spaces. I have no room for error here. Um, nobody else would place this implant on her. They wanted to uh, absolutely upright those roots, and I t totally um, understand that. And um, of course, I reviewed the pros and cons, uh, what could potentially go wrong here. And I'm really relying on the precision of guided implant placement here for this surgery. And so here we're placing um, windows in the guide so that I could verify that it's gonna be seated on the day of surgery. And so we're cutting these little windows and I'm exporting the guide and the drill protocol and everything is gonna come all along with that. Um, super clean and crisp. I really love this software actually it's become quickly my favorite software to plan implants for Eurus implants. And so it also lets you do models. So here I am taking my lower jaw and I'm gonna go ahead and circumscribe the borders and it creates a either hollow or solid model for 3D printing. And this is gonna come in handy, especially for the top where I could try in my guide and make sure everything fits perfectly, especially for a case like this where I have zero error for, for this placement. And we're threading the needle here. So I'm gonna, Go ahead and export all those files. And But where the magic really happens is when you plan in the software, you also are able to attach the scan body and open trust software right from the planning software. And so now we've literally quick launched trust. And from here now, I'm able to design my custom healer. And so I'm rotating my model orientation. The scan body comes right in from the planning software. This is fantastic. What a great workflow this is. And here I am now marking my custom healer emergence profile. Now you could design permanent abutments in here, crowns, tie base crowns, as long as they're all within the um, urus. Actually, it doesn't have to be just urus. You could do any restoration where true button makes a scan body for, which is basically every implant on earth. And so here we're designing um, the crown. And then, you know, for anteriors, I will say it is still in beta. It's a little clunky. For posteriors, it's absolutely a dream to work with. So I'm looking forward for when they improve subtle workflows for the anterior. But here we're now um, creating our abutment. We're changing our tissue contour profile here. And we're able to do one or two things. We could actually print or mill that titanium abutment, send it to true abutment to mill and you could get the prosthetic fabricated. Uh, you, could, you could have switched this and called it a tie base and then you could have bonded a crown onto a tie base. But what I'm doing is I'm actually melting that custom abutment back to make a little custom healing cap. Um, on the day of surgery, I'm gonna actually place this implant and then do some prosthetic work and I'm just gonna let this implant lie buried. So um, I'm gonna put this custom healer in and do a pontic over it instead of immediate load. And sometimes I do that when it's convenient to do so. And so here now it's creating the screw channel through the custom healer. And check this out, guys, it's really powerful. We're gonna have a pretty phenomenal um, little tiny custom healer here that we're gonna actually print the hex and everything and go direct to fixture with a screw that we will get from True Abutment. 
And so let's take a look and see. Uh, from here on out, we have free reign to export all these files. We could export the little custom healer like that, and that's gonna be printed. We could export even the crown. Um, we could actually export it combined as one file if you want to do that. And so let's look now. I'm doing a tiny little incision. I'm gonna push that keratinized tissue to the facial. I do not like punching. Um, in the anterior especially or where there's a lack of keratinized tissue we are already done with the osteotomies and we are now torquing the implant in um, i like to do it by hand when i'm threading the needle like this and this is timed and depth controlled so it's really powerful um, the urus guided kit is phenomenal so here i could screw this 3d printed crown in um, but i decided to go ahead and screw the pros the custom healer in instead let's see how we did this is a post surgery CBCT. There's the little custom healer screwed in. Everything's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and um, suture using a little Vicro, Vicro suture here. And once we get this closed, I'm going to now prep the remaining teeth. I'm going to remove that old composite. I'm going to do a little laser, laser gingivectomy there on that 10. And I'm going to aggressively prep number eight because it is canted and facial. And this is where minimally invasive ortho would have been way better than prepping the teeth. But in this particular instance, the patient's just had enough. So we're doing conservative preps um, where we can and aggressive preps where we have to. And so here we're um, just fine tuning these preps, smoothing some things out. Now on tooth number 10, I, I couldn't go any more with my gingivectomy. Um, she had plenty of keratinized tissue, but we would get a biologic width violation. So I might come back later and do some osectomy there. See how she heals after this uh, printed temporary goes in. So. Um, now we're scanning that into the software and what's cool is we've already actually waxed this up So all I'm doing is marking my margins and the wax up actually shoots right in So all I'm doing is smoothing my proximal contacts. There was no designing here. It was already done and here it is um, Kind of in the 3d smile preview. Look at how incredible um, This change is going to be and you know, you might be saying You know, this is something that is hard to achieve um, in office, but this is really easy to achieve in office as long as your team is familiar with a little bit of design concepts These types of same-day transformations occur all the time. And so we printed these in about 10 minutes And so after they came off with the printer I washed them and now I'm doing my candy coating technique. Um, there's a total YouTube video on that and then we cured them and now they're going in I'm bonding them in in place and we're gonna let everything heal and this is her immediately after delivery. I feel pretty confident with the results and I think we're only gonna get better as we transition to final prosthetics, in this case after healing and slight gingival perfection.